Hello, this video is going to show how we can achieve functional safety with Texas Instruments Code Composer Studio and the TMS 570. Now I have a, a TMS 570 launch pad connected to my laptop at the moment and it's actually a TMS 570 1224. Now the starting point is of course Code Composer Studio where I've created a number of projects. So the first project that I've created here is one where I've used the, the Halco Gen. <coughs> I've generated the code from the Halco Gen and I've then excluded the main. From that, I've then generated a library. Let's just check we can rebuild that library. Okay, so there's we have this library. And then in the project I'm interested in, I've linked in this library. I've also used the link command file from the Halcogen uh, project. And I've got the source code that I'm particularly interested in. So first thing I'm interested in is seeing, well, can we just build this project? Let's check we can build it. And there, yes, we've built it. And then I'd like to be able to see, well, is my code compliant to a coding standard like MISRA? Is it good quality? I'd like to be able to measure things like the cyclomatic complexity of these functions. I'd like to be able to execute the code. And as the code executes, I'd like to be able to find, well, which parts of the code have we actually exercised? And then finally, I'd like to be able to do some unit testing on some of these functions in order to get 100% structural coverage. So starting point is I want to be able to go and analyze the code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the build import and I'm going to run the build from within this environment. So let's go and run a build.bat. That's going to invoke gmake. And as we can see, that has now successfully built. I can see my executable. I can see my source files. I can see the include paths as well as the preprocessor symbols. Well, let's find out, are there any other symbols? Let's run the compiler preprocessing. So this is now compiling the code and it's basically saving all the defines into an external file that we can then process. And we can see these are the defines that the compiler knows about, but hasn't sort of exposed in the make file. So we might need some of these in order to be able to correctly analyze the code. So now I've got everything I need in order to be able to go and open up this project inside TB Vision. So we can see the source files and let's now go and start the analysis. So this is now going to analyze these files. It's going to do a number of different analysis phases. And then afterwards, we're going to be able to take a look and see, well, is our code compliant to a particular coding standard? And the coding standard that I've selected is the MISRA C 2012. So let's right click on here and let's do a code review. And here we can see the results and this code was not written to be compliant to MISRA. And so of course we have a number of violations. I can click on any particular violation and this will open up my editor and take me to the appropriate place where that violation occurs. Well, this is very simple to simply add a U at the end there. All right, let's take a look now at maybe the quality of the code. Let's take a look at a system call graph. A system call graph is showing us all the functions. We can see how they're interconnected. And if we wanted, I could put this into various different modes so I can see, well, which function has the most violations. It's this one here. If I wanted, I could click on it and I can see a list of the various violations over here. Well, let's take a look at maybe uh, some metrics that give us an idea of maintainability. And the most interesting metric is probably the cyclomatic complexity. And I can sort and I can see this integer to fu ASCII function is the most complex. So let's view that in a flow graph. And now we're going to get a graphic representation of the code. Well, let's click on a block of code. We can see the corresponding block over here. If I was to click on this particular block, we can see the corresponding code over there. So very useful for getting an idea of the structure of the code. We can also see the various branches inside the code. So again, if I was to click on a particular branch, we'd see the branch from here to there. Now, what I'd like to be able to do is to execute this code and find out as it executes, how much of the code have we actually exercised? So to do that, I'm going to perform what we call the dynamic analysis. So this is now going to instrument the source code it's then going to perform the build using the TI compiler. 
and now it's executing it on my target. So I have a, a TI HDS 110 uh, debugger that's now executed. We've got the results from the target. We've analyzed it. And now we should be able to go back to our call graph. And this time we can color code it in green and red to show us the coverage. So in this case, we can take a look at our integer to ASCII function again. And we can see very clearly we have some branches that have not been executed. We also have a number of blocks of code that have not been executed. For instance, this one, we've never had a value less than 180, and so we've never exercised this part of the code. Well, let's use the unit testing tool tbrun in order to be able to exercise this with a value less than 180 and increase the coverage. So I'm going to invoke tbrun. Okay, and inside tbrun, I'm going to go and create a sequence. Let's call it unit test uh, integer to ASCII. And I'm going to select code coverage. I'm going to select the file I'm interested in that is just the main. And I'm going to select the fact I want to create stubs, create user globals, and let's also do a test build. All right, so that's now generated any stubs. So we can see it stubbed this particular function. It's generated a harness and it built it. So now we're ready to start doing some testing. So first of all, there's just one flag I need to check here. Let me just go in and find what I need to set. So I just need to set that. Right, right. Let's now go and find our integer to ASCII function. Let's create a new test case. And I'm going to accept the fact that there's uh, an array here with eight elements as an input, the same as an output. And now we can see we have a number of inputs and outputs for this function. So let's give it a value less than 180. So we go for 179. Digits will go for three. Blanks will have zero. The input string, I'm going to leave that as the value that it was. So let's just retain this current value. If I wanted, I could set that to, to zero. And then the output, I'm going to expect to get character one. Then I'm expecting character seven. Then it should have character nine. Okay, and then character zero. And the rest will be character zeros until I get to here, which will be zero and then three digits. So I really should enter these in, but just to save time, I'm going to let the, the tool just run and it will tell me what it's actually found. So it's now generated a harness. It's built it. It's executing it again on the target. It's executing, as we can see, we're getting the results back. We've now analyzed that. And as we can see, well, it was 1790. And then as I mentioned, yes, all the zeros. So I'm just going to accept that and that will now store those values zero here. So really I should have put those in, but I was just saving time. Right, now let's take a look and see has our coverage increased. So let's go to the integer to ASCII function. And now we can see, yes, we have executed this particular block. So if I want to get increased coverage, well, maybe we could try with a value that has just two digits and then we'll execute this block of code. So let's go and do that. So once again, I'm going to do exactly the same. I'm going to right click on this function, create a new test case. And this time I'm going to give it a value that is less than, uh, well, less than 100. So let's have 42 and digits will have two, blanks will have zero again. And then these, this time, let's set them all to, to zero. And then outputs, I'm going to expect to get four, and then two, I'm just going to run this and again, save time. But really, I should have put in the values I'm expecting and they would have been four, two, and then all zeros, zero, and then that would be a value two. So that's executing on the target. It's getting the results back. It's going to analyze those and it's going to tell me what it's actually found. And as we can see, yes, it's a two, all zeros, and then finally a zero and two. So I'm going to accept those values and what we should now find is the first test has regressed and passed. And we should now be able to take a look and see that our coverage for integer to ASCII has now got 100% statement coverage. So that's good. So let's go and take a look at the flow graph. And now we can see all we're missing are these branches here. So to get coverage for those, what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to go and open a series of test cases 
that I've created previously. And I'm just going to run these and I should find I then end up, end up with 100% statement coverage, 100% branch coverage, and also 100% MCDC. And we can see for each of these particular test cases, I've given a particular description, and we can see we have different inputs and expected values. And so we just need to wait for this to complete, and then we should find that all these tests pass, and we get end up with the 100% coverage that we want. OK, so that's now good. All the tests have passed. Well, that means with these inputs, we got the expected outputs we're showing there. And now we can see we have the combined coverage for the integer to ASCII. And I'll just locate where it is. There we have it. And we now have 100% statement coverage, 100% branch decision coverage, and 100% MCDC. Okay, so hopefully that's given you an idea of how we can work with Texas Instruments Code Composer Studio in a TMS 570. And if you'd like more information, then please don't hesitate to contact us at LDRA. Thank you.